take notes. Um, today, we're going to deal with defending those drawing and the Morris movement and dealing with some attic degrees. And we're dealing with some whys of certain things, why certain things were done and explain because there's certain things that should have been explained to people about the temple that has not been generally explained, which has caused many people to have misconceptions of the North Science Temple of America, which is unjust, unfair, and incorrect. Um, and so the lecture today is going to be dealing with explaining some things about the Holy Quran, so for seven, about the mysteries of the Brotherhood of the East, which is the other half. All right. Now, um, Brother Rick, hold yours up for a second. Now, the mysteries of the Brotherhood of the East. That's the Adam. That's what Adam's all Adam's have, and that's of course is the other part of the Akashic records. And the Akashic records. Uh, it's actually like the, the old ancient information that's been held back from the Moors of Northwest America, uh, of Mexico. I'm going to read um, from the beginning of the Quran and put some perspective, and then I'm going to go into explaining things that most of you all know because you've all been studying, but many of the people do not know. And so um, I'm doing this particularly to defend the, the, the Moore Science Temple of America for a sake of misunderstanding. Even some of my own criticisms of some of the administrators have been misjudged as criticism of the temple, not a criticism of the temple. Criticism of some of the misappropriations and the misguidance. You know how to say um, Lying by omission is still a lie. If you get the point. And because of corruption, certain things have not been said because people will know they lose credibility when they start telling certain truths. And so they hold truths back, and that becomes the culture. And in the process, people actually get buried when they're actually supposed to be risen. If you get the point. And then with the Moors, the, the Moors Holy Temple, the Science of Old Canaanite Temple, the Moors Science Temple of America. Um, Moore's Holy Temple of Science is designed to uplift fallen humanity, to take us from a state of lack of consciousness to a higher plane of life. And so I'm going to explain what I'm saying as we go through the lesson. I'm going to read from the Circle 7 Quran, pocket version. Holy Quran of the Moore's Holy Temple of Science, Circle 7, divinely prepared by the prophet Noble Dwali, by the God of his Father, God of Law, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his Father, God of Law. Inside cover of the page. Know thyself and Allah, the genealogy of Jesus. Life works. Life and works of Jesus in India, Europe, and Africa in the land of Egypt. Now you must understand that statement means more than what you say. All right. Noble Dwali, the prophet and founder of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science to redeem the people from their sinful ways. Know thyself and thy father God Allah, the genealogy of Jesus with 18 years of the events, life, works, and teachings in India, Europe, and Africa. These events occurred before he was 30 years of age. These secret lessons are for all those who love Jesus and desire to know about his life, works, and teachings. Dear readers, do not falsely use these lessons. They are for good, peace, and happiness for all those that love Jesus. 
Dear mothers, teach these lessons to your little ones, that they may learn to love instead of hate. Dear fathers, by these lessons you can set your house in order, and your children will learn to love instead of hate. The lessons of this pamphlet are not for sale, but for the sake of humanity, as I am a prophet, and the servant is worthy of his hire, you can receive this pamphlet at expense. The reason these lessons have not been known is because the Muslims of India, Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets and kept them back from the outside world. And when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed the secrets. And for the first time in ages, have these secrets been delivered in the hands of the Muslims of America. All authority and rights of publishing of this pamphlet 1927 by Prophet Mubarak. The industrious acts of the Muslims of the Northwest and Southwest Africa. These are the Moabites, Hamites, Canaanites who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Yahshua and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt. In later years, they formed for themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called this day Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, ETC. All right, that's the entry. All right. Now, when you read in literature, in the literature that's issued in the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, the Moorish Science Temple of America, you'll see in the back where the prophet talks about the Renaissance. And the Renaissance is its key in world sociology and politics. The Renaissance, the Renaissance is where the Moors came into what is now known as Italy. And remember, all your nation states, as you presented to them in modern history, truthfully, did not exist at old, as old world governments, as they're presented. They did not exist. You understand? When you give it in history now, uh, they present them as if they're old world countries, but it's really more for geography, although they won't admit it to the public. Do you understand? So if you go into most of these countries around the world that they call the old world, you'll find that their founding dates is in 18 and 17 and don't predate. You understand? Many of them are even 100 years old. They were all part of the empire. Do you understand? And the reason why the sun never sets, rises or sets on the British Empire because the British inherited the Moroccan Empire through colonial power. This is why, in order to understand the politics of the world, it's important to understand the Treaty of Verona um, between King John of England, 1213, and Pope Innocent III, which is the foundation of the Inquisition against the Moors, disguised as the Spanish Inquisition, so you can understand the politics and the misrepresentation of what you call religion. All of that is totally connected. If you look at the social systems and the political systems, uh, civil systems, without conjoining in your mind, quote unquote, suppression of religion and representment of the word religion under dogma, then you cannot understand the sociology and the politics. The old Canaanite temple, the Moors Holy Temple of Sciences, Moors Science Temple of America, were established to counter the Spanish Inquisition and to reconstruct that which was lost in order to bring the people from the lower plane into the higher plane. This is why Islam is given in degrees. Are we clear? So I want you to understand why I wrote this. All right, Islam family. Islam. So Islam is given in degrees, meaning that you start at a gradient and you're brought to another gradient. Then you're raised to another gradient. Unfortunately, 
what I discover as I travel the country and I talk to people around the world, the, uh, and particularly uh, interesting, due to the fact that we've been presenting information to the people for years openly, that many of the others have been suppressing, the people have begun to search and read for themselves and study, and the people have advanced. Therefore, subtle things that they used to ignore before, they recognize. And so you see a lot of people around the country, like I talked to some people from uh, Australia last week, and they were asking about uh, the Holy Quran and, 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 and Jesus. And Noble Drali, because in some of the books in Europe and Africa, they talk about Noble Drali even more than they do here. You know, they're aware of him, quite aware. And making reference to something they saw on the website of someone criticizing, saying he's teaching about Jesus, when he knows he's not Jesus. That's because we've been teaching people, if you understand. But that's where the prophet found the people and is raising them up. And so it was necessary for them to know about the mysteries of the Brotherhood of the East, which is what the Adams have, which is their duty to bring these people to the next degree. Islam family? Islam. Can I help me just for a second? Islam. Now, this brother, Islam family, introduce yourself to the family. I'm Kamu Katais Natutu Il. Islam. 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 Adam Trump. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Open your jacket. <coughs> Tell me about your charm, brother. Well, the charm basically represents love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Um, the sword is actually the scimitar. The scimitar, I'm sorry. The scimitar yeah. actually represents the strength. The star is the open star. It means we're free and open people. Yeah. The red background means and represents all the blood that was spilled for our land. And uh, LTP up at the top, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And that sword represents justice. Thank you, brother. Uh -huh. Now, the deal is, Adam, <clears throat> Adam means expert. One who's well schooled, well qualified. That's what Adam means. So when one enters into the Moorish Science Temple of America, one comes in basically as a neophyte. Some people come with their eyes open, but some come as neophytes. Most came as neophytes. And so when you measure the people as they come into the Moorish Divine and National Movement, you measure them by the fact that they've been under Roman influence for quite a few generations. So the majority of the people do not know the truth about human development on the planet because they've been misguided by Romans. And so their concepts of how to look at information, how to look at politics, how to look at international trade, how to look at international relationships, how to look at common personal relationships have all been corrupted. Collectively, that misinformation has developed what is known as quote unquote, dead culture. The dead culture is the carcass upon which colonial powers feed, like a jackal. Like a jackal kills an animal, right? Buries it, let it begin to rot. Then comes back and get it later, and that's how a jackal feeds or gets its nourishment. This is a unique, a unique nature of the jackal. This is another reason why the jackal's head is sometimes used in a negative connotation for the devil, as you would say. Though the devil itself, himself, herself, is a myth. These keys, all addicts know. As an example, just giving you some examples. For instance, like, high priests know that the devil's a myth. Popes know that the devil's a myth. Adams know that the devil is a myth. Preachers know that the devil is a myth. Reverends know that the devil is a myth. All of those different titles are all 
paths or PhDs, doctors of philosophies. Do you understand? All of those are doctors. They're different titles that relate to the same truth foundation of the philosophy of humanity on the planet. So don't get confused because someone has a PhD in, in medicine that he's different so much than one who has a PhD in mathematics and in, and in linguistics because they're all PhDs. You understand? And so when someone comes at you, Red Grand Shiki guy, Reverend Bull Shiki Dorf, Pope, pious of his own butt, and all the rest of the crew, anybody with a title are PhDs and are addicts. Are we clear? I present that to you to say to you, because some of these people don't have straight conversations with you, or they may divert questions that you might ask, do never and not ever assume that they don't know because they play dumb. Do you understand? Those titles represent this. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So, Many of them, when challenged, they like to play games with people and take a superior position with their knowledge. But then when the people begin to question them, they start giving them diversion answers or unclear answers. Well, it's just for God, you know, that type of stuff. This is the Lord's hand. It's too deep for you to understand what kind of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? But meanwhile, they, they are telling you you need to know this information and give them $5. Right. <laughs> Then when you ask them questions, you're not ready. Well, if you're not ready, why are you messing with me in the first place? Why are you telling me something that I need to know, and then when I question it, you tell me it's too deep for me to know. It's beyond me. It's in God's realm. Everything else, but you know, let's be straight. Well, when you're ready to tell me, I might be ready to give two cents. Other than that, there's no need for us to converse. I, why do I need to go to your building? And you tell me, I need to know God. Um, as soon as I ask some questions, you would tell me it's too deep for me to know. I mean, what is this? You know, but most people don't have the courage to ask some blunt questions because they're on a guilt trip already. Because one of the arts are perpetrating dogma, dogma, dogma is what has been presented to 90% of the people on the planet. Wrongfully presented, wrongfully presented as this. They're not synonyms. This is what the world gets. This is what they get. That's why they got the PhDs. You understand? That's the key to their power. The key to their power is they know the truth. And this truth universally is called high culture. The masses are told this is worshiping. The masses are told that this is worshiping. It is not. The masses get this, which is worshiping. Are we clear? And I'm telling you this because we need to take the people, the masses to the people, to the added degrees. Because people are coming into this Moorish movement around the world, not just here in North America. And they're absent of certain information that should have been given a few decades ago. 
but because of it, it causes a lot of confusion. It causes some disrespect for the temple that should not exist. Because the temple's not wrong. The temple's right. But the people don't know the history of the infiltration and misrepresentation of the temple by some persons who might have those titles. Do you understand? By either lying by omission and not coming out in time to tell the people certain things, because remember, a lot of them are guilty of being a part of taking the people's finances and then shutting down the prophet's paper and making sure it did not go back into print. Are we clear? See, so for them to change their position now would put the people's eyes on what they have not been doing and it causes a contrast. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then people start thinking, well, if no Ali, the prophet, that all these guys keep saying that they love, they follow him, and they've been teaching these people for, said that that press is the most powerful weapon in the hand of our group. How could they, of all people, allow that paper to disappear while they're still taking finance from the people? When that prophet, who they all boast about, said every temple must have a school, where are the schools? When that prophet right there said, in order to change the people, you must change their literature. After all, I've given you this. So you're well qualified. Now go out on my word and redeem your people. How come it hasn't happened? What happens if people start examining? They'll start recognizing there's some betrayal going on. Then if they've been given keys to research, and they start going into government papers after all, see, because when they start taking their places in the affairs of men, they will start communicating with those who know law, including those in the government. And then they'll start getting the FBI papers and other papers, and they'll see why the temple's misrepresented. But then that causes problems because there's some good people in the temple being marked when they shouldn't be marked. Do you understand? So we have to bring open information to the public because the birthright belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to individuals. It doesn't belong to us who carry these titles. That title belongs to the people. Those who have it are only there to serve the people. They're not there for their own good, for their own ego, for their own vanity. They're there for service. They're there to raise the degrees of the people. That's why they were given that title. And if they're not raising the people, they need to leave them alone. Do you understand? But that's no, it's no worry with that. It's not a concern. Because you take this information out to people, you plant them seeds in the earth, the sun and moon will do their job because that's what that operates on. The problem that you have battling with the people out here and some of the leadership is because that's what they've been using. That's their key to their power. Because they know that the people's concepts are wrong. Do you understand? As an example, as we were talking earlier, these are keys. So if the masses have been given dogma for generation after generation, and they were told they were given religion, they have felt safe, haven't they? They thought they'd arrived, haven't they? They thought they had this thing covered, didn't they? Huh? And so when they hear about secret societies like Masonry, Skull and Bones, Jesuits, Eastern Star, Daughters of the American Revolution, Daughters of ISIS, etc., Union Guard, White Familia, they're looking at them, Kytlons, etc., they're looking at them as different organizations with different clubs, different agendas, etc. Well, in general, they may have different agendas, but at the foundation, all of them got this. See, but the different names blind people who don't know what they are. You know the old key, rose by any other name is a rose? You understand? This is why every once in a while it is well that we take people to number one Broad Street or take them to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, let them see the statues. Statues. Take them to Alexandria, Virginia, and let them see 
old pictures, 100 year old pictures, with European oil paintings with Moorish fezzes on them, with Eel and Bay, Morocco, the name of this land, Islam, the science that runs the planet, Muslim, but in the public they talk about Christian. It's a conflict, it appears to be, it is, but yet it is not. What you need to know what Christianity is, you need to know, you need to know what Islam is. And neither one of them is what the masses think they are. This is why when you go into history, you'll see that Moors have been well known for pushing culture, and they built churches for Christians too, and mosques and synagogues too. But that's when they were teaching religion. But even the mosques now don't teach religion, if you get the point. And it's not to put anyone down according to, quote unquote, their beliefs, but it is to put things in perspective. Do you understand? In other words, like the babies here, the babies would be given belief. Why? Because now the mother could teach them according to religion and have brought them here already opened up and prepared, but most of the time the women don't use their womb because they're not dealing with religion. You understand? So the children are developed not in school when the first school is the womb. Do you understand? And that's really a science. And it's, that is the culture. That is truth in religion. <coughs> is that the children are supposed to be supposed to be educated in the womb for nine months. That's part of religion. And every woman is supposed to know that. How come, it, how come it's not known? How come if we discuss it with most people, they're not even aware of it? Or they look at it as it's just happened to be the philosophy that we happen to be speaking of at this moment when it's universal. But the world has been shut into darkness by people holding these titles. No devil did it. These high priests did it. No Kuali has come up against the high priests. That's the uniqueness of his job. Even some of his own high priests are his enemies. But you don't argue. For those who know, you don't argue. You know I say, you John Coltrane? You talk about how bad you are, you're going to blow? Yeah, it was I. Because when I yell, I'm really deep, and then when I do like this, you know what I'm to <laughs> Grab your horn. <laughs> Tell me how bad you are. I'm going to give him a ball. Give him a ball. Roll. They got these titles? Teach the people. Because certainly, the ministerial document we have for ministry in the Moore Science Temple of America says the hedges and the highways. Don't say no corner club. But you, I, and we all know that, that that has been violated, which is why we're back to making sure that people understand Islam was given them degrees to take it to the people. Because they've been cheated. And in the process, a lot of good Moorish Americans in the temples have been black marked because of fraud in the administrations. Good people. Do you understand? And then, you know, people have a tendency to be when they're in organizations not wanting to rock the boat. And so they don't speak up, but by not speaking up, they're held to the conspiracy. And it's not totally valid, but some people don't have the courage because they know that when you step out with other two, people don't like you. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? And some people like to be liked. But then, if you're on a mission like this for the world, you do have to decide whether you're really a soldier yes, that's right. or you're just a club member. That's right, that's right. I say, if you got this title, you're a soldier. Do you understand? Even you club membership with your children. But make sure they have the capacity to reach those degrees. You, you understand? And if you don't do anything with it, Make sure that others have it so they can have an opportunity to develop what you don't develop. Because that's the key to raising humanity. So as long as these people don't know that they've been given dogma, it blinds them because they've been told constantly 
They've been given this. Are you religious? Oh yeah. Well, it's easy to say. <clears throat> All you gotta do is give them an Asian lesson, and they'll immediately show you that they're not religious. But they don't know that they must know that esoteric and exoteric knowledge, which is the osis of the gnosis. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. And so the osis of the gnosis must be taught in degrees. Why? Because you must purge yourself. You must be baptized. That's right. That's right. The baptism is a washing That's right. of the thought process, That's right. That's right. a cleansing of your concepts by replacing emotionalism with gnosis. Yes. By replacing beliefs with gnosis. Do you understand? Yes. And in the future, because it's, it's a lot to talk about, and I'm going to do this in, in a few more series when I go to New York and I've got to go to Chicago, I might carry through with this. Because this needs to be cleaned up. And it's only going to be cleaned up by those who know, who are willing to rock the boat and just tell the truth. Yes, sir. You know, because what happens, too many good people are injured for a lack thereof. Um, and so, <clears throat> with your degree, as, as a matter of fact, um, many of you are, who are in class recognize that a, a few um, weeks ago, actually a couple months ago, I started a uh, reading from the uh, Book of the East, a couple of chapters, and also in Harlem, preparing people. And the interesting thing, after I did a couple of classes in Harlem, is when I got a, a, one of the calls from Australia, and I got a couple of calls from England too, because a lot of them, they were really on top of this. And regularly, talk to people, we got about four different study groups in Canada mm -hmm. that are extremely active. Um, and so I talked to a lot of them. I did a couple of Skype programs, you know, because they don't have as many temples there, you know, and uh, also one in Japan. But I can't really understand that the, the accent is so strong. You know, I, I try to be accommodating, but I can't understand what they're saying. But, you know, people are acting around the world. And so I'm coming to the defense of the prophet and, and the temples because of the misrepresentation. Clarification doesn't mean that you just go and then go along with the program, but you must know so it's not disrespected because we need every institution to get work done. And so what happens, we have to make sure that the youth understand so when they come into these temples that they already have the added mind to clean up the mess that they see yes. mm -hmm. and not blame the temple for what any corruptors have done. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? All right. I'm going to read, um, let me use your book of East. Now, of course, you already know in your Holy Quran Circle 7, your lessons are Jesus, right? So in the mysteries, of course, you, you, you already see Horus, and you see the Bactrian, what they call the Bactrian beast, this is the camel, crescent of the star, and at the base, you understand, you got your master seal, which is your 12 disciples, your 12 constellations, your four gates, and of course, this, each one of these four gates is represented by the circle seven, where you see the openings is represented by this now, so Adams get this, and the masses get that, they're being prepared. But yet that and this are one. Do you understand? And so every Moorish American is supposed to know that after they've been in the temple for a while. But we already know. We don't have to argue the issue. Fleece and the people. Said fleece and the people. Let the people see for themselves. I will not say that. You know, they've been played. Bluntly. So, so a master knows that these four gates is the mundane cross. Mm -hmm. You understand it's called the mundane cross. In physics and science, that's the glyph of the earth. You understand? So mathematicians and scientists know what that is too. 
How come most Americans who got the crown don't know what that is? We're not talking about, we know the average do. We're talking about the followers after they've been, what, two or three years and they don't know this? Someone is keeping them in the first grade. Right? So when you go in the Quran, and in the book of the East it says what? Through faith. Through faith. Belief is lost. And through fruition, faith is lost. So that means there's degrees there. You're rising in degrees. Do you reject belief? No, you do not. But it's a clarification of what these levels actually are, as opposed to people assuming anything. You're not to assume anything. You understand? So if we're dealing with the babies, and we're talking to them about beliefs, we're not going to debate with them on the mathematics of the operations of the universe. Or the activation of the seven major, but not the only, power centers of the spine finalized with the tassel, which is the crown chakra, to the universe. So we would deal with them on belief. Then you got teenagers, they develop as poor to where their spirit is and where their mother took them. They might even be in fruition, but most of them will be in faith. They're exercising some of these things without total clarity and accepting some things without proofs, but just satisfied. But religion is designed for their evolutionary stages because they're supposed to shed that shell and to become fruitful, produce fruit. When Allah, man, or one, when you hear that statement, it means you become one with the osis of the gnosis or the knowledge. That's why when you enter the Holy Quran, it says, know thyself and Allah. It says, know Allah and thyself, know thyself and Allah. Therefore, you must be taught the religion of walking the wheel or the ritual that's given in Islam to Muslims all over the world of going around Kaaba in a circle counterclockwise seven times. It's called circumambulation. But that's a ritual, isn't it? Isn't it? That's why Drali brought you the science. So you understand. In other words, the more science temple is to take you out of the ritual, doesn't reject ritual. It says if you want to ritualize things, you can, but you are here to know what the ritual means <coughs> and to become what you know. Which means you are to shed belief. And when you have shed beliefs, and have been working the workshop of the mind. You're preparing to shed your faith. You're not abandoning divine order and becoming atheist and all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is misrepresented. You're abandoning that. You're growing up and you put your childish things away, become a woman and a man. And that is the degree of fruition. Are we clear? That's why in the wardship dispeller, I demonstrate the representation of the three candles where you have your physical and your spiritual side exposed, which is neophyte, right? Belief is neophyte, first candle. Second is faith and scholar. And the third is what? Fruition and master. And that's what all Moorish Americans are supposed to know. After all, they've been given instructions to raise these people. They've been given 360 degrees full circle. But what's happening, people are holding back.
because they either don't study, they've been given these titles by nepotism, meaning clubism. It's my boy, so make him that, make him this. Hitting on his sister, so you're going to make her she just, I mean, the same game that's played through all the corruption yes. is still yes. being played. Yes, yes. But this is the people's birthright. This is the movement for raising humanity. That's why the prophet came. It is not to be disrespected. However, if people don't understand, they disrespect because they're measuring it by the people who are presenting the argument. So it's rough for everyone because everyone has their work to do when they come here on the plane of earth. But you must be worthy of those titles irregardless. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So that's the nature of this lesson. I'm going to read from the mysteries of the silent brotherhood of the East. And again, one of my favorite chapters is chapter 8. I'm going to read it and I'll explain to you why it's one of my favorite chapters. And I'll also explain to you why a lot of priests, rabbis, imams, addicts who all have this knowledge, why they don't like these degrees. At least they don't expose these degrees. All right? Now pay attention. Circle seven. <laughs> No wrong thing to what? To raise the people to higher planes of life. Higher planes of life. Degrees, higher degrees, you see? But he says it in a manner that no one's threatened with it. You get the point? Chapter 8. The Council of the Seven of the World. In every age since time began, but seven sages lived. At first of every age, these sages meet to note the course of nations, people, tribes, and tongues. To note how far, how far, to note how far towards justice and love the race has come. That's the entire human race. Are we clear? To formulate the code of law, religious postulates and plans of rule best suited for the coming age, coming cycle. Yes, yes, yes. So when you have your 101 questionnaire, 100 is 360 degrees. 100% whole circle. The one starts on the next degree. So you're dealing with the coming age. So it gave you the foundation of the cycle present and already took you, started on the spiral to the next cycle age of the Aquarius. This is why when Europeans get this lesson, it's called the Aquarian Gospel yeah, yeah. of the Christ. Yes. Yes. Of Jesus the Christ. But that must be taken to another degree too. This is the same degrees. Do you understand? Everybody has it. Don't ever doubt that they don't. They ain't told you. Because they've been living off of you. Yes, yes. The devil didn't do this stuff to you. They did. Hold your question. Write it down. Now I'm going to read this through, and you'll understand why them rabbis, the priests, the reverends, grand sheiks and addicts, many of them don't want to give these degrees to the people. And you're getting ready to hear why. One of the major reasons why. So I'm going to complete this, then discuss it. An age had passed, and lo, another age had come, and the sages must convene. Now, Alexandria was the center of the world's best thought, and here in Philo's home, the sages met. 
From China came Mexte. From India, Vidyapati came. From Persia, Casper came. And from Assyria, Aspina came. From Greece, Apollo came. Matheno was the Egyptian sage, and Philo was the chief of Hebrew thought. The time was due. The council met and sat in silence seven days. And then next arose and said, the wheel of time has turned once more. The race is on a higher plane of thought. The garments that our fathers wore have given out. The caravan have woven a celestial cloth and have placed it in our hands. And we must make for men new garments. The sons of men are looking up for greater light. No longer do they care for God tuned out of wood. They seek for Allah not made with hands. They see the means of the coming days and yet comprehend them not. The time is right and we must fashion well these garments for the race. And let us make for men new garbs of justice, mercy, and love, that they might hide their nakedness when shines the light of coming days. And Vidyapati said, our priests have all gone mad. <laughs> they saw a demon in the wilds, and at him cast their lamps, and they are all broken up. And not a gleam of light has any priest for men. The night is dark. The heart of India calls for light. The priesthood cannot be reformed. It is already dead. Its greatest needs are graves and funeral chants. The new age calls for liberty. The kind that makes each man a priest. Enables him to go alone and lay his offerings on the shrine of the law. And Casper said in Persian, people walk in fear. They do the good for fear of doing the wrong. The devil is the greatest power in our land. And though a myth, he dangles on his knees both youth and age. Our land is dark and evil prospers in the dark. Fear rides on every passing breeze and lurks in every form of life. The fear of evil is a myth. It's an illusion and a snare. But it will live until some mighty power shall come and raise the ethers to the plane of light. When this shall come to pass, the magic land will glory in the light, and the soul of Persia calls for light. See why they don't want that? Them degrees? You know why they're not taking that truth to the people? Because the priesthood is dead. That's right. They don't want the people to know that the reason they're not raising the people is because they are dead. Now, translation of the game's off. Translation, the new era of time has come. What is in the last millennia the cosmos disallows for the light of Aquarius is here? Is air, but he bears water. And all that crap's been washed. It is the age of I know. Thus, dogma, which
which was presented to the world in the past age, dies not because someone says so, because the sun, moon, and stars say so. That's right. That's right. And when the Son of God comes, vampires flee. And so with your four gates here, you also have your four gates in the book of Malachi closing out the Old Testament. Because the Son of Righteousness arises with healing in his wings. S-U-N. Even in that Bible. So when they say they don't know, they're lying. Why don't the priests tell the truth? Susie might, got, might get mad because they ain't going to the Bahamas this year. With Jesus' is half. Same thing with the Rev. Same thing with the pious imams and rabbis and all the rest of the crew who know the truth. They won't enter in and they hinder the little ones that are locked in belief from entering in. When they have been delivered to the attic degree. Because it, it, they basically teach you to, to be controlled or control your behavior. Because in society that's already created, there's no vested interest in uh, recreating a society. They basically want to uphold what they've already created. So that's what the, the churches and I'm saying the government structures are there for to keep that system up, basically. Check. In other words, it's Inquisition operations. It's, the system is dogma. You've got, you naming the dogma. Bring your question. Bring your question. I first came with this now through a clock of destiny before I mm -hmm. uh, a certain set. Yes. Now, clock of destiny, CMA at a degree. Because when you add it, you know what he's saying. So I went directly to that. Oh, yes, you did. Whoa. But you may not have been told everything the way it should be told. Because everybody that so-called TCM, they don't necessarily come straight out because some of them playing control games too. Do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? That's been misrepresented too. So, uh, you know, and so this is also where the confusion comes from where people think that <laughs> the, the clock of destiny degrees and the more science temple is different. No. They are evolution of the circle degrees. That's the clock of destiny. The clock of destiny is the movement of the cosmos, which is what? The universal clock. Drawley says, what? Well, I am a universal prophet. And my philosophy will be universal. Don't get this twisted. I only came to you more because you need me the most. There ain't no ownership here. Don't get that twisted. But you will see that that concept of ownership of the prophet exists in many temples. Wrong concept. Do you understand? He's a universal prophet. He said he did for it. He called him that is what you already know. It. But the same bias that exists in most quote unquote dogma organizations misrepresented as religious organizations is an ownership of Prophet Muhammad. An ownership of Jesus, an ownership of Du Ali, an ownership of the Buddhas, whichever one that you're following, because that's a degree. I thought that you the, understand? I thought the religion was actual different aspects, and the true way of life is the all encompassing knowledge of what actually is. Come on for a second, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you a demonstrate something to you. Beautifully dis displayed, but I'm going to show you something. Raise your degrees. Repeat what you just said. Religion is certain aspects that different cultures or different uh, tribes of people see as one aspect of the whole. The true way of life is the all-encompassing actuality of what is. Now stop right there. Interpretation. I want you to get that tape. And I want you to study yourself. Right? Show you something. Beautiful and it said nothing. Because you heard someone say it. 
the aspects are what? They are your trines, squares, conjunctions of the Lord's around the circle seven demonstrated here that give you reading on the spiritual plane just like this shirt and you are reflected on the physical plane of the ways and the map of your life. That's what he said. But did he know that he said that? That's key. Do you understand? The distinction between what is given to the masses to throw out there what you would call cliches mm -hmm. have a culture science behind them that you're supposed to know. And so when you say that, then I say, good, I'm so glad that you say that. You know? I say, good. What I want you to do, here you go. Give me your trinity. Now I'm stopping right now so we don't waste time. Great philosophy is back to the same principle that I'm showing you. He's saying cliches. I ask you for your trinity. Your trinity is those aspects of that circle of your life. That's your sun, your moon, and your ascendant. You see the point? Because that's how you're going to know yourself. So when the prophet says, know thyself, and thy father God Allah, you're supposed to learn the workings of this circle seven. And so you're supposed to know your triune Allah. That's your sun, your moon, and the sentence. Because that's the aspects that teaches you your way of life and which way to go. Yes, yes, yes. You're supposed to know yourself and let thy soul dictate to you. Yes. It dictates to you because it gives you the math. You've long left belief. You're now dealing with the fruit. Allah and man are one. So when I ask you for your trinity, for your aspects, which you presented in your conversation, is only to show you how things are presented to people in the name of religion, when the imams, the rabbis, and the abs have not really been teaching them religion. They've been teaching them symptoms. And the symptoms and the rituals with control mechanisms is called dogma. It's not disrespecting what you said. It means when we make these statements, a true addict and a true master will ask you, good, now blow your horn. You pulled it out. And this is what we must challenge with each other. Yes. And not challenge to challenge, but we must teach each other to make sure that they know how to do it. This is why you start them when they're children. You teach these lessons to the little ones while they're young, so when they become old, this is normal. If they say they're religious, you know what the hell. You know why you feel safe? Because they know themselves. You know why you feel safe? Huh? Because they'll know you. This baby, I was looking at a little sister. You know, sister's coming to class, she's just a little bump. You know what I mean? That a little blanket. And she's playing with her big sister, it's beautiful. You know? But the